Okay, going live. One, two, three. Okay, we are live. Slide show mode. Okay, okay. Welcome everyone to the Master Liang show again. So today we'll be talking about Grab, the super app of Asia. So have any of you all used the Grab app? Or, or have any of you all not installed before or never used before the Grab app? Let me know. For me, I used to have the Grab app on my handphone, but I have since uninstalled it. Why? Because Grab is getting more and more expensive. In the past, it was super, super cheap. Now it's like super expensive and Master is a poor man. So Master can only take the BMW, bus, MRT and walk. So Master is poor man, never use the Grab app. So if you are online, feel free to say hi to me. Welcome, welcome. Hello, MT Pals. My master, my favorite ML. How's your weekend? I use every day. What every day you use Grab? Ah? Then I think you'll be interested in today's deep dive. So uh, previously I did the deep dive on Mei Tuan. So Grab and Mei Tuan has some similarities, huh? But Grab the focus is more on the right healing which later I will tell more about. So if you're online, feel free to say hi to me. Edmund Hong, welcome, welcome. Wow, Edmund, you're, you're the bird bird become silver color already. You from uh, bronze bird become silver bird already. Upgrade already. Huh, what, huh, what, uh? So, John Lam, good morning millionaires. Was sick for a week. Master, you're awesome. Always being humble. Thanks for support. Thanks John for the support. Marco Wong, very extreme, eh? delete it. Yeah, because I like to, uh, I don't want to have too many apps on my handphone. My handphone, I think, only have like 20 or 30 apps the most. Some of my friends, they have like 100 apps, 20 apps on their handphone. Uh, I only use those that I use commonly because I'm using an iPhone. I'm like a minimalist. The more app you use, uh, the more money you spend. That's how I think about it. And for me, I only have one credit card. I don't have so many cards. I use one card for all my shopping. The more you have, the more you want to spend. Then, uh, MT Pow, Grab Pay. Wow, that means Grab Pay is so popular. I didn't know. Grab Pay and Shopee Pay seems like more and more popular. Marco Wong, sometimes urgent use. So, there, there was urgent use before. I, I Urgent use, I need, I wave, then cannot get the taxi. Then, I faster install the Grab app. Then, immediately, I grab for a, 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 a ride. Very fast, just a few minutes. Also can. The, the file is uh, not, not very big. TZH, you also stop using Grab. Ah? <laughs> Why? Why you never use Grab? TZH. Uh, last time very cheap. Now more and more expensive. Oh. Edmund Hong, thank you. Yeah, Silver Bird. Min Wee Tan, welcome, welcome. Um, remember to switch on aircon. Aircon already on. Already. Oh, don't worry. Edmund Hong, when introduced Discord, I consider making... Discord or Telegram, I, but in the end, I don't want to. Because actually, to be honest, I want to protect you all. A lot of those scam cases, like people, they create Telegram group, but then got the fake, fake Telegram group. Like Adam Koo, he got a fake Telegram group, then inside got a scammer. Also very dangerous. So I think I just communicate with you all through uh, my Twitter, my YouTube, and just my Substack. These three areas. But whatever from whatever channel you all message me, I will surely reply. Like the uh, YouTube, all the comments I will read, all I will reply. Substack, all the comments I read and reply also. Yeah. So win, win, welcome win. TZH, too expensive. Grab pay, not much perk also. Wow. So, seems like most of you all install the Grab. Then some of you all like me have uninstalled, but most of you all still having the app. So today I'll cover lots of things about Grab. I have 40 slides. I'll cover the story, the business, the management, the valuations, the financials. So let's begin. So for Grab right, he actually started with Anthony Tan, this handsome guy here, and Hui Ling Tan. So this Hui Ling Tan is not his sister. They're actually not related. But both of them, they have their work experience. And they met at Harvard Business School when they were doing their MBA. So Anthony Tan is actually from a rich family. In his uh, 
father and grandfather business is the Tanchong Motors. It's a listed blue chip company in Malaysia. So if you are from Malaysia, you all surely know this company. They do a lot of distributions of cars. They even have a branch in Singapore. They do the distribution of Japanese car, like Nissan car, Toyota car, all this. So Anthony Tan is actually born from a rich family, but he's very hardworking. In fact, in his interview, he shared that he's the one that always do his homework. Then Hui Ling is the one that always copy his homework because she's so busy. So together, they met and they click off very well because both of them are from Malaysia. So when doing a group project in which they won the second prize, they present this business idea. It's called My Taxi. Basically, they have a problem. So as a business person, you are making products or services to serve to solve actual problem. And the problem is with Malaysia taxi. Malaysia taxi is unsafe. Or that last time in my experience uh, in like KL, I want to take the taxi. I will tell the uncle, go by meter, can or not. Then they say don't want. They want to quote me a price. And the price they quote me is super high, super expensive because I'm a foreigner. They want to chop my chop my money. <laughs> or, or I tell them meter, they say okay. Then I go on to the right. Then they never turn on the meter. In the end, they quote me a price. Then master cannot chop. So my experience in, in Malaysia taking taxi 10, 20 years ago was pretty scary. But especially for female, it's even more scary. That's why they came up with this product called My Taxi. Basically, it's a bit of a copycat of the Uber app, but they want it to be more localized. Malaysia version and it also more focused on safety. So for their this uh, presentation, they got number two and they were awarded 25,000 US dollars to start this business. So for Hui Ling, she was with uh, McKinsey. So basically working as a consultant, uh, very atas one. So uh, very high performer also. So she had to go back to McKinsey uh, to serve out her bond. I think she had to work for another three years. So while she was working at McKin uh, McKinsey, she also helped help out Anthony Tan with the business. After she finished her three year bond, she joined uh, him full time to become the chief operating officer. So their beginnings was in Malaysia. It's called My Taxi. It's a basically an app. Lah. So they go through all the different petrol stations. They will have this uh, advertisement. Ask those, all those taxi drivers to download this app. So that through this app, people can book taxi. And the taxi companies, they can have a rough indication of where their entire fleet is covering the area. So later on, they wanted to expand. Because they want to cover like private private uh private healing uh, uh, right healing all this so for uh anthony right through they rename it to uh grab taxi my taxi they re rename it to grab taxi they asked the malaysia government uh, or kazana for funding but because there's a lot of red tape and things move very slow so it did not progress well so instead they just went to singapore and in singapore it seems that the the pace of everything is very fast. Immediately, Temasek agreed to finance them ten million dollars for their expansion. As such, once they take the funds ready, right, they move their HQ from Malaysia to Singapore, and also because of the investment, right, the Anthony Tan became a Singaporean Singaporean citizenship. So when Temasek invests in you, not only you get the funding, you also get the free Singapore citizenship. So. The roots for this company is in Malaysia, but a lot of people, they think of Grab as a Singapore company because the roots, the investment, the foundation was actually built up from Singapore. But the, the, the funny thing is that I mentioned SE and uh, Grab, both their founders are foreigner. Grab, uh, Anthony is from Malaysia, then the Forest Lin is from China, but both of them became Singaporeans and both of them they are based in Singapore for that this big tech company, but they lease in the US because, like I mentioned, Singapore SGX is a dinosaur market. It is a dying market. That's why we want to invest. We go to the US market or the China market to assess all these big tech companies. So with the funding from Temasek, they were able to expand aggressively in Southeast Asia. So Malaysia, Singapore, then expand to Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. And from the Grab Taxi only, they also expand into Grab Car. 
basically private hiring. So private hiring back then was very new. It was super cheap. I remember paying like, I think like three dollars, five dollars. I can take a grab. I can grab from one end. Cause I stay in the west. Uh, from west, I can go to central or to the east. Just three or even five dollar only because of the coupon, the discount, all this. It was a super price war. So basically, in the beginning stage, they were burning money to capture market share. And their main rival was Uber. So for them, how were they able to expand into so many countries? One thing is the Anthony. Because he worked, uh, he has many experiences in such a bougie company. And he also has a lot of connections. Like he can meet with the politicians, meet with the big boss of Tamasic and Kazana through, through his uh, family ties. Uh, there are strong connections with the politicians because if you want to enter a new country, you need to get the license. It's, it's not, not, it's quite complicated. And the other thing that they are strong is the localization. They understand the different culture among Asia. Like in Malaysia and Singapore, they run the Grab UN campaign, which was very well received. And they, when they enter into Thailand, there's the Grab Tutu. So people like us, like master go to the Thailand for holiday, or you can like, uh, for just bought onto the three wheel tutu and go to the night market, go for massage, go and eat seafood, all this is very convenient. So localization is very important. Secondly, through their connection with the government, you must build a strong relationship with the government. Because the government can just ban you. They say, oh, we must protect the taxis. All this private hiring, we just ban. So they, 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 they prove themselves that they are actually helping the community helping the local folks. For example, in Indonesia, they partner with the government to do the uh, vaccination. So this, this help, as long as the government see, hey, you are helping them, you are doing community service for them, you help them solve a problem. So the government will be more welcome of your app. Same for in Malaysia, in 2020, the COVID lockdown, the government had to distribute uh, funds to the common folks. So they distribute it through the Grab app. To the Grab app, they dis uh, disperse $50 credit each to 15 million Malaysians. So like in Singapore, we have the GST credit. They immediately give us through the bank account. But for some countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, you'll be surprised. Some of the rural folks, they don't even have access to banking. They don't even have bank account. Instead, they, they have access to the smartphone. So the smartphone is their bank account in that sense. So uh, in the beginning, right, Uber and grab they fight so intensively this was the period where they both burn money to capture market share and grab was losing i think like one or even two billion dollar per year so that was the, the time where us the common folks we benefit the most do you all still remember how much you all pay for the grab ride how much you all pay for the uber ride i remember i used the voucher five dollar ten dollar fifteen dollar voucher i pay very little less than ten dollar only last time i take then subsequently, it uh, now more and more expensive. After, so what happened is, because they were bleeding a lot of money, and both of them, their uh, shareholder was actually, they were backed by SoftBank. So they were asked to merge together. So basically, Uber was the smaller player as compared to Grab in the Asian market. So Uber took a 27.5% stake into Grab. And they say it's merger, but, but it's actually more like Grab eating away uber and to become a monopoly monopoly right grab just closed off uber the app the uber app was shut down so nowadays you cannot use the uber app in asia anymore uber focused back uh, on their u.s market so the same thing happened also for the china market uber and tt merged together and uber exit the china market so china market is dominated by tt asia market is dominated by grab and US market is dominated by Uber. So the best thing that happened for Grab is that they acquired the Uber Eat business. U Uber Eat, yeah. So food delivery. So they rebrand it into Grab Food. And that's where they started to branch out into the Grab Food. So uh, now I'll talk more about their individual businesses. So today we see, wow, we, it be, it's starting to become a super app like deliveries, ride healing, then you also have the uh, grab pay, all this. So feel free to say hi to me and feel free to ask me any questions about the fundamentals also. 
So okay, TZH too expensive. Grab pay not much perks. So in the past, a, a lot of perks. Yeah, because pre pre merger, right? They were so competitive. They keep throwing vouchers and coupons to us. Yeah. So yeah, when I go to Malaysia, right? Uh, recently, ah, uh, I just like those one day trip in Malaysia, like JB, right? It's so cheap, you know. Even now, because I think the the petrol is subsidized. I uh without voucher anything just within JB I move around east west north south it's just like five dollar ten dollar per trip only and RM eh, that's that's like sing dollars two or three dollars it's very cheap and very affordable to use Grab in Malaysia but in Singapore it's starting to be very expensive it's like twenty thirty or even forty dollars especially if peak hours is very expensive nowadays when I look at the social media a lot of people are complaining that Grab is getting more and more expensive. Marco one, I go Malaysia and Thailand. Grab is cheap for Singaporean. Yes, because of the exchange rate. Yeah, so like uh for us right, like a Singaporean, we go to Thailand or M Malaysia right. Use the Grab, we can do everything. We can book taxi, you can get food, you can book hotel, you can book air ticket. You can also use it for payment. You just need the Grab app. You can travel all all around already. Now I don't have the Grab app because master. Lose so much money on Alibaba. No money to go holiday. The furthest I can go is JB only. Wait, wait till Alibaba. I what already? Alibaba two hundred dollar or what? Then maybe I master go, uh, Thailand for holiday. So Jun Chai, welcome, welcome. Any news on China banker? Oh, the Bao Fan ah, no, no update leh. But China this weekend they have the Liang Hui lah. So the China they set their GDP target at five percent. This is below analyst estimates of five point three percent. So. Maybe next week I will do a update on the China China market talk ah. The have a macro talk and what's the outlook ahead for China after their Liang Hui meeting. So Mister Toko Yomi, pure blue Singaporean, not so entrepreneur. Yeah, so Singaporeans are not so adventurous. We are taught to be very safe. You know, get a fixed salary. Don't don't risk risk it. Whereas like Malaysian and uh. And uh, Indonesia and even like China, they are more entrepreneurship. They like to do their own business, have family business, or expand their business. Singapore even business people, they ask their children to get the government job. Everybody wants stability. Everybody scared to die. So Man Wee Ling, good evening, good evening. Yeah, Agnes Mok, welcome to see you again. Now thank you for time on Sunday night. Sunday night, just relax and chill together. Yeah. So can check what is the impact of cross connect between Hong Kong and China. Saw a bounce in the Hong Kong, uh, tech ETF. So because of the cross connect, uh, China folks they can buy the Hong Kong, uh, stocks. Because China folks they access to Shenzhen, and uh, uh, Shanghai uh, stock exchange, and through that they can buy Hong Kong stocks like Tencent, and they can buy the Hansing Tech ETF. But they cannot buy Alibaba because Alibaba is secondary listed in the. Hong Kong, but once Alibaba becomes primary listing, maybe the year end or next year, then the mainland folks they can also buy into the Alibaba. But now the mainland folks they are buying into the Hansing Tech is because it's undervalued. Yeah, so as the Americans sell out the the Hong Kong and the China folks, they are the one picking up and trying to bargain hunt. Most of the Americans they they already exit Alibaba and give up already. They cannot take take the 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 all the negative news. So exploring API, but but bought Grab but got burned. Wow! So Grab dropped a lot, from ten dollar dropped to three dollar. So later I'll talk more about the stock price, the valuations, whether can buy or not. Yes, hey, Xi Renli, welcome, welcome. Wow, your bird bird also your all the bird bird become silver bird already, become silver color. So Grab will turn profitable or not later I'll cover also. So Render Tan, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you online. So Edmund Hong, welcome. When Baba were introduced to Stock Connect, so, uh, Alibaba can only be traded on the Stock Connect if it's Hong Kong primary listing, and it will only happen towards the year end or next year. They need to seek the AGM uh, annual general meeting approval. Once the shareholders approve of the restructuring of the employee share options and the sh uh, share based compensation, then they can do the primary listing. So Alibaba three months later. Because we just reported results in February, so in May they will report their results. Then after then and that will be the last quarter of their work year. Then afterwards they can do the AGM, 
probably in August like that. August will be the AGM, then year end or early next year, then they can proceed with the Hong Kong primary listing. So Grab Ad is so convenient, be it you are in Singapore, Malaysia or Thailand, be it you are using it locally or going overseas for holiday, it covers all your needs. So what is their market share? For like right healing right in the Singapore market, they have about 50% market share. So while Uber is already gone, there are new competitors. Gojek is coming in strong, you see. Gojek 17% market share. Comfort, they'll go actually, they also re re revamp their app already, coming in at 15%. Then the right and Tada is pretty weak. Uh. I, 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 think they, I don't think they will be a threat. Yeah, I'm more worried about Gojek. Gojek is coming in pretty strong. I think the, the rest right will eventually die off. You have to be the top three or you will die off. But basically, Grab is still the market leader. Then in the Indonesian market, Gojek and Grab, they are both fighting it pretty fierce. Each of them both have half the market share. So Gojek is actually emerged with the Tokyopedia to form GoTo. So GoTo, the major owner is Alibaba and SoftBank. But Grab is also under SoftBank. So basically it's SoftBank versus SoftBank. So together they dominate the Indonesian market. So it's okay. So if you look at the, their right holding market share across the whole Southeast Asia, Grab is actually the market leader in most of the countries. You look at Grab which is in blue color. Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, they have the most market share. It's only in Indonesia that they are being threatened by the Gojek. But Gojek is trying in, to attack into all this market. So hopefully, uh, then most likely, la, there can only be two. Like we look at the China, is China market is TT and Meituan, then for the right healing, then uh, for the food delivery is uh, Meituan and uh, Erle Mei. So the same thing for the food delivery. So food delivery is actually not easy to do. Uh, it's even more difficult to do than with the right healing. What's food delivery, you must consider the food preparation time, go and collect the food. Then when the customers, when they order the food, they are already very hungry already. So there was a time when people are very angry. You use the grab food, you have to wait one hour, two hours. But nowadays, I think it's getting more and more efficient. But still will have people complain ah. see so for as a new player right it's very hard because you need a lot of data to optimize that like, doing what timing how long does the store take take to process your order doing the peak area what's the number of orders can the store take so much orders or not so it's through all this big data through all this optimization so the new players right it's very hard to uh and en enter into a food delivery that's why i'm not so confident of the Douyin attacking the Erle Mei and the Mei Tuan Wai Mai into the food delivery is really pretty difficult. In the Singapore market, right, same thing. Grab owns about 50% of the market share in green. Number two is Food Panda. Number three is De Deliveroo. Deliveroo, I think they will die off. Like, look at their market share. They used to be like 10, 11%. Now they are shrinking to 8%. So I believe Deliveroo will be gone case and it will do be do dominated by Food Panda and Grab. Just these two. So for Food Panda, right, they're actually a, a Eurasian company and I don't see that they are listed. They are, they are not listed, but they might be listed in the future. So for Food Panda, right, I think they're trying to be profitable in 2023. Their target is to turn profitable 2023. Okay, then next, for the Asian market, you can see Grab is the clear leader with their gross merchant value GMV at 5.9 billion. Food Panda is, is less than half of that. Then Gojek is number three. But Gojek, same same thing. Gojek is only strong in Indonesia. For food delivery, is Grab and Gojek, each person taking half, be it food delivery or right healing. So Indonesia, the battle has been set already. Then for like Malaysia, Philippines, right, is Grab and Food Panda. So Gojek, I think they are trying. They are, they are not so trying to enter into the food delivery. Like. You see, Gojek is here, number four in Thailand, also number three in Vietnam. It's very difficult. Food delivery is much difficult. You need a lot of data. You need a lot of you need time. Like. Basically, when you sign up a shop to, to join under your the food delivery, it takes a lot of months and months, quarter after quarter, to optimize and optimize like, what is the delivery route. And the delivery route can be changed due to like construction, or redesign of the path, how to optimize, everything keep optimizing. 
in the beginning it may take one hour two hours then as you optimize then it becomes 30 minutes or 40 minutes that kind so like in vietnam the market leader is actually this uh now i don't know <laughs> i'm not familiar with uh the smaller players but for me i believe that this kind of small players eventually they will be bought out because they cannot expand in other countries so in the end they will be bought out so maybe I won't be surprised if uh, Gojek uh, or Goto, they just buy out uh, now. Because they either they expand to other countries or they get bought out. So in the end, the end game, the end game of Southeast Asia is just three players. Grab, Food Panda and uh, Goto. So Food Panda in the end might be bought out by the Goto. Then just two players, Grab and Goto only. So that's the game. It's always top two or top three. It's winner takes all. So the game is very simple. Same for the right healing. Number one is grab, number two is uh, go jack. The rest will slowly die off. They either die off or they get bought out. Yeah, it, it, because you need really need a lot of economies of scale. Even grab and go jack, they are both the market leaders now in their respective markets, yet they are still loss making. That's how difficult it is. So later I'll explain more of the financials. So for the food delivery, in Southeast Asia, grab has the biggest market share, 50 four percent number two is food panda number three is gojack so number four and below is confirmed gone case confirmed sure die the other get acquired being acquired is their best case then or they will just die off especially now the interest rate environment interest rate is going higher and higher so the debt is a big burden to them and it's difficult for them to raise money nowadays like like softbank softbank is not funding anyone already softbank it is trying to survive and SoftBank is not taking on any new projects. So all of them cannot get funding. They are, so they are just waiting to die, basically. So uh, same. So for the Grab, they actually copy a lot of the Meituan playbook. They enter into groceries delivery. Same thing for Uber. Uber now in the US, not only they do the right holding, they also do Uber Eat. They also do uh, this kind of deliveries also. Like those... Uh, help the supermarkets deliver uh, shopping items or even fresh food so this is so like I explained to you before for the super app right what is your objective how you want to make money for deliveries and for the transport which is the right healing you actually don't make money your objective is just to break even or make a super super thin margin you want the people the user to keep coming back to everyday use your app to scan, to make payment, to, to order food, or to uh, go back home. Your main profit making is actually through hotel service, or you book a gym, or you book a movie ticket, or you book an air ticket. That is the one that you get the fat margin. Or you can do the uh, tele doctor, which is health. Yeah, so it's your other products that give you the big returns. So what is now Grab, right? He has already established a very strong base. It has about 700 million users across Southeast Asia. That's very big. Meituan has about 1 billion users. So uh, Grab has 700 million users, but the spending power is different. Uh, Southeast Asia, the income levels are also lower, but that's very respectable also. So we, next, we talk about uh, the other features, which is also the Grab Pay. So uh, for in the Singapore market, they actually partner with the Singtel. So it's actually Grab X the Singtel. So this is their app. Lah. So they will start to roll out more financial service already. So in the future, you will be able to do investment and insurance with your Grab app also. And nowadays, uh, a lot of shops, they start to have the QR code. Shopee Pay, Grab Pay, then you scan to pay. Like pay the hawker or pay all those uh, small shops in the supermarket. So for payment, right? Their strategy is not to do it themselves, but to go through partnership. Like for Singapore market, they partner with Singtel. Then for Malaysia, they actually partner with the Co Group. So it's a big blue chip company. They cover a lot of business segment like property. They are very strong in property also to enter the Malaysia market as a digital bank. So Singapore, we have five digital banks. Malaysia, we have five digital banks. I think Indonesia, there are seven digital banks. So they partner with the MTech. MTech is also a telco. So why they need partnership? They need partnership so that they can immediately reach out to many users. Like Singtel has access to all the users in Singapore. 
whether we are using telco or using the television or through whatever service. So Singtel has a lot of customer base. That's why they want to partner to tap into the customer base. So it's like a win-win situation. But in all these markets, be it Singapore, Malaysia or Indonesia, their main competitor is who? It's SE, C Money, C Limited. So for SE, right, they're actually more of a do it themselves. They also have some partnership with the locals, but SE, they are more strong towards doing it themselves because they have a stronger capital backing. Then nowadays, a lot of being talked of is the AI or artificial intelligence. So actually, AI is something that's overblown. Now. As long as you are a technology company, you will use AI. AI is everywhere. Even now, YouTube, you, you are recommended my video because based on the AI, it knows that you like to watch videos about the stock market or you are interested in videos about Master Leong. So they re recommend you my live stream. So the same thing, AI is also happening everywhere. Like we use the Grab ad. The AI will recommend the food that we want. Like you like spicy food, you like fast food, or you like, uh, let's say, Chinese food, Indian food, Malay food. Yeah, it's all, your recommendation is based on your ordering habits. Then like I mentioned before, the mapping, you need to collect a, a lot of data. Because Grab and Go, Go and Go to Gojek, they have most riders. Uh, Uber, they have the most riders. Meituan, they have the most riders. Then every day, their riders are passing through the entire country. So they can keep optimizing and get the best path. The more riders you have, the more you can optimize. Whereas the smaller players, because they have less riders, their, their, their routes they, uh, that they travel to is less optimized. So the riders, they are less efficient. When you're less efficient, it means what? You earn less money. So if you you want to be a grab, you want to do ride healing, you want to be a driver, or you want to deliver food, you should join the biggest platform. Because the biggest platform, your work will be the most efficient. If you join number three or number four, your work is less optimized. Instead of a 30 minute delivery, you might take 40, 45 minutes because you waste more time at the shop, you waste more time on the delivery route. Same thing for the marketplace where you order like supermarket food. Or it's the same thing, Shopee, Lazada, how they optimize to you. And this one is the face recognition. Uh, because like for Malaysia uh, or like even for the riders, they don't want illegal people, like underage people doing the food delivery. Or they don't want a driver that is not the real driver in case that you are taking a midnight ride and someone get robbed, get raped or what. There's a crime happening. It must be the real driver in case something bad happens. So most important is the commission. How much can we make? So it, for Uber, right, they're charging a 25% commission rate in US because Uber is the one that started all this. They are the originator. Everyone else like TT and Grab, they basically copy Uber. They are a copycat. Uber is the originator. They have a 70% market share in the US market and their business is the so-called most matured. Their growth rate is also slower already. So in US, number two is Flynn, uh, LF, L-Y-F-T, Flynn, yeah. So Uber charges 25% commission. So 25% is the upper range, the highest you can charge already. TT is charging 19%, but I believe TT, the commission rate will come down because of the pressure by the regulators and also the increased competition in the China market. Like for May Tuan, they charge about from the beginning 8%, then they raise, 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 raise the risk until 22%, but now it has come down to about 15%. So the China environment is more competitive. Uh, and also the bike dance will be entering also. So for food delivery, currently Grab is charging on average uh, in terms of the Southeast Asia, 21.4%, you see an increase. Uh, so you see that uh, your food getting more and more expensive, not because of inflation, but also because the Big tech companies, they give less incentive. They don't give coupons anymore and they charge a higher commission. So everything is feeling more expensive. Then for the right healing, they are charging 23.3%. So it's probably towards the peak already. In, instead, last year they was charging higher, 23.4% and it has come down. So probably for Asian market, it's less mature. They can't afford such a higher price then it has stabilized there already. I think this is the optimized price. Uh. It's towards the upper range already. So yeah, so financial service, I think this will not be accurate, the margins, yeah, because it has just established only. It's still very new. 
basically they are now expanding in Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia and still burning a lot of money to capture market share to get people to use the grab pay so for the revenues right most of their business come from Singapore so although Singapore is the smallest island in Southeast Asia but Singapore is the wealthiest island only master is not wealthy there are so many millions millionaires in Singapore so so much spending power oh, look we have this called the Ting Tai Fung uh, DTF index so the while everyone is gonna face a global recession Singapore is still going strong. The queue for the Ting Tai Fung is still very long. The weekends, a lot of Singaporeans are still spending a lot of money in the shopping malls. So, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, all these are very important markets also. Because Southeast Asia, the population is so big. Yeah, so going forward, the, the same thing. Singapore, Singapore will still be the most important uh, revenue generator for Grab. That's why the headquarters is in Singapore. And also Singapore will continue to grow because the hot money from China coming in to buy our property and also the talent also. The future is technology. If you are, uh, let's say you study computer science, you want to work for a tech company, where do you want to be headquarters in? You want to be headquartered in Singapore, not in Malaysia, not in Indonesia. So a lot of the tech, uh, the, the, tech, tech the talents will still flow into Singapore and Singapore will be the regional base for companies like Alibaba, SoftBank, Tencent. In fact, they are all the same camp. So basically, Grab is in the same camp as Alibaba because both their father is SoftBank. So later, I'll talk more about the management. So how are they gonna grow? How are they continue to grow their revenues? Well, because like China, a lot of people are very used to the food delivery and ride healing already. Whereas Southeast Asia, the penetration rate is much lower. Like look at food delivery, 17% only. I think we can move more towards like 20-25% is very possible. So that's another one third growth rate just based on the penetration alone. Then the right healing also, but right healing, I don't think it will be so so strong. Yeah, like why? Because our public transport is very strong, especially for Singapore. So because the public infrastructure like Singapore in the future, you can MRT to everywhere already. So there's not, not so much need to do the right healing. So food delivery could be more important for a country like Singapore because people are lazy. They just want to stay at home. They want, they want the food sent to them. But uh, for mobility, it's very important for those more tourist com countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand. So like me, if I go to those countries, I'm not going to take their MRT. They don't even have MRT. So like Thailand, they have the MRT. I, I took it before. It's actually quite good. But as a tourist, I think you will still want to take the taxi because it's so affordable. So there's still a lot to, of room to grow through the online penetration. And another way that Grab can go is through selling more products, more services to the customers. So I mentioned to you before in my the Meituan talk, to shop and also to location. So you want to, to location means like in your app, selling hotel booking, uh, air ticket, uh, movie booking, gym booking and then uh i mean, I mean to uh that, that's like uh to to, to shop uh, to shop that's to shop like go for massage or go to the shop like go to the hotel go to the gym that's to shop to location is actually to the user like deliver food to them deliver deliver groceries to them so for grab right the amount of things that you will see in the features right will only get more and more they'll become more and more like meituan that's why it's becoming more of a super app. And that's where they have the virtuous cycle, the five wheel. So gone are the days that you will use so many apps. Use one app to book your hotel, use one app to book your, uh, let's say your food delivery and another app to do your, the right healing. So apps like ComfortDelgo will sure die. You can really see it already. Why would I want to install an app ComfortDelgo just for my, the right healing? I install a super app like Grab or Gojek, I can do everything, right healing, book hotel, book gym, I even do my uh, groceries, even book my the facial, medicure, pedicure, uh, book my massage, book my the international buffet, there's so many things I can do on the app. Gone are the days that I install five or six app. Yeah, so I, I might reinstall my great app again, because there's so much use. Uh. If you have one great app, you can do so many things. You don't need to use the other apps. So they will, 
as they have more features in their app, the spending per user will keep increasing. So remember, the right healing, the food delivery is just to make you go into the app every week. It's the other services that will help them generate the profits. So in the beginning, they were funded by Temasek. Also, I think it's called the GV Capital. It is in the beginning here. One, one of them, yeah. Or the I think it's the Vertex Ventures uh, is, is the one that's under Temasek. So Temasek, right? Later later rounds they stopped to investing already. In fact, I think they now they still hold a stake, but just a very small stake only. In the in the mid round, SoftBank invested a lot because they have the Vision Fund, or they get the hundred billion dollar Vision Fund from the. Saudi Arabia, so they are loaded with cash. That's why their strategy for SoftBank is they invest in all the invest and make them the top players. SoftBank they invest in Uber, they invest in TT, they invest in Grab, and they invest in the competitors also. So those that SoftBank invest, they become the winners because with the SoftBank money, they were able to burn money to capture market share to become the market leader they are today. So one thing interesting one take note is that before their IPO, they actually got funded by Microsoft. Ping An and Booking.com. So Booking, I used to, I in the past I used the app Booking when I travel overseas, US, Europe, Japan. I use Booking.com to book all my hotels. So it's so in the future, let's say you book hotel in the Grab app, or maybe even now, or actually you are using they, they actually link it to the Booking uh, platform. So they, they link and just get a commission, which is also okay. But for my Meituan, it's more like they do it themselves. They don't like to partner. So you do it yourself, your margins will be higher, but it's more difficult. You must do all the big data. You must start everything from the start. Whereas for Grab, they link into Booking.com. They have instant access. Then Ping An, what is Ping An for? In selling you insurance. What is Microsoft for? It's maybe to have games. So don't be surprised if like in the future you will see you can play Diablo on your Grab app. Or it link you to. I also don't know what's Microsoft. Uh, is going to acquire the Active Vision Blizzard. So more towards games and Microsoft, they have the Xbox. So I don't know, I have no idea why uh, Microsoft is vested in the Grab. Yeah, so it's that, that's the interesting part. So now we come to the management. Oh, so wow, I see you all. Feel free to ask me anything. Oh, so, okay, Render Tan. Okay, Shun Chai Tan. Maybe Chicken Genius or in Grab. Yeah, so on the Chicken Genius, his the Twitter, I think he tweeted once before, he said that uh, the he expect Asia, the spending to boom. So he feels that Grab could be the one that benefit. Like now it's also, you see that tra tourism is back already. So when like me, I, the Singaporeans, we travel to Thailand and Malaysia, we need the Grab app to, to travel around, to grab all around, to explore all the places. Yeah, so Edmund Hong, I don't like Grab business model. Yeah, if full self driving comes, then Grab will be decimated. Yes, that's why. So there's two camp. One camp is like the China camp, the Baidu full self driving, the BYD, which is EV. Whereas the Japanese camp, uh, the Japanese their thinking is different. They never go all in on EV. They they still sticking to the uh, ice vehicle, the internal combustion. And they are they believe in this the right healing sharing so it's the diff, two different philosophy so the Japanese camp, uh, they are not strong in EV they don't believe in the EV changing the world so I believe uh, in the future it will not be hundred percent EV also I believe the market will be split half the people will use EV half the people will use ice because not everybody cares about the environment that's my my view not everybody cares about saving the world so people. There will still be people that will stick to the petroleum, especially, uh, let's say developing countries are, uh, they are more focused on cost and less on the environment. So it depends on which camp uh, you believe in. Yeah. So the data that C and Grab collects will be the asset. Yeah. So full self driving, you need a lot of data also. Yeah. So they can also do their own full self driving, but in the end, the one that lose their job is the taxi driver the private driving so in in the future uh, example like Meituan or even grab they might com command a fleet of robo taxi then they then you just ride the taxi they earn your commission no they just buy example softbank under them they may, may, may partner with Baidu Apollo 
then they don't then you can also through your the app instead of hiring private healing you summon a robo taxi they can also do that kind of partnership so there's a lot of possibilities Aloysius Fong hello welcome welcome Marco Wang yeah Meituan setting the standard yeah so actually Meituan is came in later than Uber but I feel that Meituan is actually more advanced more ahead of TT so Meituan is the one that I like their business model the most yeah so they even now have the drone deliveries example you need medical supplies yeah so chat GPT AI is uh, overhyped I also believe so so actually AI is already everywhere already be it Google Microsoft even you do online shopping is also AI what, what is the products that they recommend to you you use social media is all AI AI is everywhere is how we use it how we interpret it yeah so Marco Wong Singapore is main market yeah I think the rest of Southeast Asia will also grow very fast yeah like example like Malaysia now they have a new government see whether they can revitalize or not then Indonesia they also very focused to upgrade themselves learn new technology but in the end, a lot of these Asia countries right they are riding on China China is the one that they have to depend on to ride they cannot depend on US US and Europe I think is gone case already that's why you see the Asia countries they all of us don't dare to offend China because China is a very important partner for Asia to grow so yeah so recently uh, Microsoft came out with chat GPT 4 wow keep upgrading uh. keep uh, so, so but I think the chat GPT is uh, overhyped uh. I think in the end there will be a lot of that 20 30 different versions but in the end people will get bored of it uh. in the end we still need more practical use how are people gonna use the AI to be more productive in their work so this part I want to cover is more on the management so usually for B car shares is 10, 10 votes the super voting rights but for grab uh, the difference is B car share has 45 votes so this is something that I'm very uncomfortable with Anthony Tan he only holds 36 percent at 3.6 percent of the ordinary shares but because of his 45 votes right he has 62.4 percent voting power to control the company he only needs three. 3.6 percent of the shares he can control the company so it's very unfair lah, but but that is why he doesn't mind being diluted he, most founders usually they, they will retain like 10 20 percent of the company yeah, yet he only has 3.6 percent so it's very very less so Hui Ling Tan is uh, num, num, number two lah. so they consolidate they are voting together lah, in a trust then the other major shareholders right is SVF is the SoftBank Vision Fund, so it's the mega hundred billion fund backed by the Saudi Arabia. So they, that the one they have eighteen percent stake. Then Uber, TT, and uh, Toyota. So that is the basically the Japanese camp lah. So one thing with the Grab is that they have a non compete with Uber and TT because they are in the same camp and because of the merger and acquisitions they sign a non compete deal. That means uber cannot enter into the asian market uber cannot enter into the china market tt cannot enter into the us and asian market they each focus in their own region they focus on dominating their own region so the big become bigger so these three they will definitely conquer and they will still remain the market leader because softbank is the one backing them they have the most fun so the game of technology is the same be it we are doing e-commerce right healing or anything in the beginning is that who is your daddy do you have a sugar daddy the one that gives you the most money you are backed by SoftBank backed by Alibaba backed by Tencent you have the most money to burn you will end up being the market leader and you will dominate the market and now all the position has been fixed already once you have fixed the market share like now even now I give you 10 billion dollar to start up a new app in Singapore to fight against Grab I give you one year, two year, three year, five year, you burn all your money and you cannot capture the market share because the position is too strong. Even now, Comfort Delgo from $3 drop to $1. They launched their Comfort Delgo app, they, they will not beat Grab. People will not use the Comfort Delgo app because it only has one feature to book the taxi. That's useless. You, nowadays, people they use one app, it's multiple features. That's why they are, it's too entrenched already. Their mode becomes very strong. So for the management team, you can see Anthony Tan, Hui Ling Tan, and you'll see a lot of them, they're actually from 
SoftBank, Mingma is from SoftBank, then they also from Uber. So a lot of them, I also can see the Russell Cohen is also from SoftBank. So the management team is all the same same group of people. So one thing I don't like, right, uh, is that actually the IPO is through the spec. And through spec, right, the spec holders, they have the free warrants. The foreign warrant they can exercise to buy more shares. So there's 26 million warrants outstanding to purchase one. One warrant is one share la, at $11.50. It will expire five years later. So it's uh, 2026. So the warrant still exists for three more years. So within the, these three years, right, there's no way Grab can go above 11150. One, 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 because if it goes to 1150 people will exercise the warrant. So warrant is basically like a call option. It's a free option. They can buy new shares at 1150. So if the Grab shares trade at $12, they will exercise the warrant. I pay 1150 and I sell immediately at $12. I get free 50 cents. Am I right? So this will cap the upside of the Grab. So until 2026, your upside is actually limited. Then the next thing we talk about is dilution. Because they have the convertible, so the convertible preference shares, uh, all of them has been removed already. All of them, uh, when they did the IPO through the spec, right, it's all converted into equity. So they have the warrants that I mentioned to you, uh, that is convertible. So they have the share options for employees. They also have the uh, restricted share units that's given to the staff. Because you need to attract the top talents. Uh, so they also have the options. So at least there are subsidiaries. Uh, which uh, they, they also give the options to the other subsidiaries, the employees to motivate them. So the total possible dilution is about 224 million shares, which is significant. So the total, they have about 3.8 billion shares. So we look at 224 billion, that's about 6% potential dilution ahead. And this dilution now is not happening. Like you look at the past, what's it just IPO in late 2021? So in the past one and a half half years, the shares did not change much because the stock price is depressed. So when you have the share options, there, there's a strike price, right? Yeah, so the, the IPO price is $10. So if I give you the option at $10, you, you won't exercise it because now it's trading at $3. So a, a lot of this dilution will not take place unless the stock price trades higher at $10, $10 or above. So your upside is, is kept in that sense. Then we go into the financials. So revenue growth has been very strong over the past few years. It's growing at 50%. Or average growth rate 50%, 60%. Back in 2019 and before, the revenue is actually negative. Why that's negative? Because they actually lose money. Do you remember the times that you paid $5 for a Grab ride? $5 for an Uber ride? See, because basically they give the coupon, the discount, they do subsidy. So this incentive, right, if you look back at their annual report in the past, it's negative, negative few hundred million, <laughs> negative revenue is due to the incentive. And in 2022, because after the IPO, they restate things, right, so that there's a bit of accounting changes due to all this incentive, yeah, due to the way they recognize the incentive. So another way that we can measure it is look at GMV, gross merchant value. But I feel that GMV is more for the food delivery. La. For, for food delivery and right healing, we can use GMV. But we look at the whole business because some things we should not use GMV, like booking of hotel and upselling the other services. Yeah, so GMV is another way to look at it, but I prefer to look at it using revenues. It's more clear cut in that sense. So from the COVID until now, the GMV increased by two times because during the lockdown, people don't want to go out, they order food delivery instead of, and they cannot go to the restaurants, there's limitations. Yeah, so food delivery exploded. So so GMV also exploded and 2x or in the past two years. So we look at, so I actually realized that the Grab reported their results uh, last month and I, I totally missed it, I didn't even know. Only recently I saw, hey, they actually reported results. I look at the full year results. Hey, it's actually quite good. That's why I want to do this uh, deep dive. That's why I'm doing a deep dive now. So actually GMV grew by 30% last year. So the full year results was amazing. GMV grew by 30%. Revenues grew by 125%. Revenues grew by 
Revenue growth is very explosive due to a few reasons. Because post ISP IPO, they change their accounting. That's why revenues is heavier than what it seems. Then uh, secondly, is because of the reopening. So this year, people start to go holiday. Go Malaysia, go Thailand for holiday. Everywhere open already. So everywhere you can just grab right healing, travel around. So the right healing also started to recover again. So, uh, but the, the downside is, you know, they are still very loss making. They are adjusted EBITDA is still negative 800 million. So, uh, but, but ask me, what is the outlook ahead? Will they become profitable? So you look quarter by quarter, their margins are starting to improve already. The loss amount is actually about the same, but must understand revenues doubled. Yet the loss is the same. That means their margins improve. Also, every quarter, their losses are narrowing and narrowing in terms of percentage. Then for their food delivery, they actually turn profitable already. That's why your food is now your food delivery is more expensive now. Also, because they charge a higher commission rate. So their commission rate has already peaked already at 23%. It's, the maximum they can go is 25%, but I believe it's difficult. Uh. Most likely the, the commission rates will hold it at 22, 23%. That's the maximum already. So in order to be more profitable, they need to do two things. One, give less incentive less coupons number two they must give have more added service like booking their partner with booking.com their partner with pingan doctor so you refer customers to to do teddy consultation to do hotel booking you earn more commissions and this is like free money like that you just attach one link only right? and then they link then they use the service then then you get the free commission already huh? so lastly you look at the valuation so grab can buy or not this year is down about five percent also if i look at price to sales the forward price to now the current 12 month uh, trading 12 month price to sales is pretty high 8.7 times previously when i look at it is 10 times because the revenues improved that's why the this figure came down but looking ahead right 5.76 times it means that revenue growth continues to grow at 50 percent so i believe that price to sale is still on the high side why because may Tuan, is trading at four times sales and i tell you meituan is fairly priced i only buy meituan it comes down to three times sales and the second thing you must understand that grab is heavily shorted because the valuation is high and they're still very loss making so you look at the short interest is five percent normally for us companies right the the median uh, the average short interest is about one percent one point five percent also like even alibaba is heavily shorted alibaba the short interest fluctuates between 2 to 5%. So 5% short interest is, is a bit significant, but usually those that are super shorted, the short interest can go up to 10 or 20% like that. So grab the short interest 5% is similar to like Tesla. Tesla sometimes the short interest also 5%. So it's heavily shorted. So you must be careful. Short term, like when they reported earnings, it was it was disappointing and it went down 8%. So short term do expect it to be very volatile people will still want to short grab but on the flip side because i mentioned before it came the ipo was a spec ipo that happened in the end of 2021 one and a half year ago so the ipo is that this so how does the spec work it's actually pre-funded the ticker code is agc so people subscribe to the agc right they each of them they put ten dollar per share to fund this AGC counter. So it's actually a blank check, a shell company. Inside it has 4 billion of cash. So 4 billion of cash, it looks for a company to acquire. In the end, it decides to acquire Grab and it value it at 40 billion. So 40 billion, you take 4 billion, you put into the company, you buy 10% of the shares. 4 billion to buy 10% of the 40 billion company. So back then, the grab was valued at 40 billion that was during the boom days and the ipo just right at the peak before everything exploded right now today the market cap of grab has fallen by a lot by three quarter now it's just 12 billion market cap from 40 billion market cap ipo it fell to 12 billion market cap so is this a buy is this an opportunity or not so price wise it looks very cheap but you look at the fundamentals actually that is very cash rich because of this 4 billion injection. Look at the balance sheet. They actually have, after burning 
money like 800 billion every year right they still have 5 billion of cash in their balance sheet the market cap is 12 billion 12 billion but they have 5 billion of of cash that's 40 percent of their market cap in cash that's super cash war chest like Meituan previously I covered Meituan has about 10 percent of their market cap in cash so for me right because they have so much cash we have to strip out the cash and we readjust the price to sales so if we strip off the cash the price to sales instead of six times is more like four times so actually grab the valuations is similar with Meituan what if we adjust for the cash war chest so I think grab is fairly priced if you want to buy into grab I do not fault you I think like if you want to buy Meituan at four times sales I think it's a good buy just that it's not undervalued but it's a great company grab I believe is also a great company it's the same model as Meituan in the end they will continue to dominate they will, because of the virtual cycle the flywheel effect they, will, the, they have more users they have more merchants it becomes at the more data they only become stronger and stronger and no one can catch up with them I give you 10 billion dollar 100 billion you also cannot catch up with them because it's too late already they'll yeah they will still all they will remain the market leader be it food delivery or right healing but the question is what about uber what about TT we should compare their valuations relative to the uh, US and to the China counterpart so for uber right it's trading at about two times sales so their growth rate for this year is much less uh, 10 20 percent growth rate because one uh, us they are they really capture all the market share and they have 70 percent market share number two us is going into a recession in 2023 so this year the growth will be very slow 10 20 percent growth and uber is considered big tech already the market cap is 70 billion but Recently, the Uber, the stock price has a very strong run. Of course, US market, everybody say, oh, there's no recession. ARKK is up, Nasdaq is up, Tesla is up. So, Uber, despite up 20, 36%, right, the price to sell is still very cheap at uh, two times. Then, uh, we look at the TT. TT is only trading at one time sales. So, the outlook is very bad for TT. You see, the sales from half time become one time because they are expected to lose about half their revenues uh, this year because all their app has been uh, offline for I think one year People, new users cannot download and a lot of newcomers like Mei uh, and a lot and there's like 20, 10 20 over smaller players came in to fight into the right healing so they are facing a lot of competition so the outlook for TT is pretty bad but yet it's trading at one time sales so I would say that TT and Uber is more undervalued than Grab. So Uber has 70% market share, TT has 50% market share, which is still respectable. Of course, Grab also 50% market share, what, am I right? So Grab four times sales, it, it, I think it's fairly priced. I think Uber and TT might be more undervalued. But the problem is all three of them, all three of them, they are loss making. And it will take some time for them to be profit making yeah it could then if you want to buy into the right healing you believe that the future is right healing food delivery my i think a proper strategy from a portfolio perspective is to buy all three of them you buy us china asia you you bet on the big trend and that's what softbank is doing softbank invest in all three because they believe that in the in the long trend like the next five years ten years they will dominate they will have 70 80 percent market share same as Meituan Meituan has 75 percent market share in the food delivery TT can have 75 percent market share in the right healing Uber from 70 percent market share you can go to 75 percent Grab can go from 50 percent to 70 75 percent market share they will only become stronger because they have all the customers and all the data so a more sound portfolio strategy is to buy into all three of them but as a whole on average you are paying about two times sales which is dirt cheap but the risk is that they are loss making but as a whole there's a belief that maybe the next one or two years they can turn profit making well, so or you, you can just buy into softbank <laughs> well, softbank owns shares in alibaba and they own shares in all these uh, tech companies so in the future if you have interest I might even do a deep dive on SoftBank but SoftBank 
uh, is their main listing is in the Japanese market, but they are also listed in the US market. I think it's a secondary listing or OTC. I'm not too sure. Yeah. So what is the outlook ahead for Grab? The management guidance is that for two zero two three, revenues can grow at fifty four sixty percent. So that's pretty strong. That's pretty solid. And that they expect that in the last quarter of 2023, they will start to break even. So two, next year, 2024, they will be profit making already. So one more year of cash burn. And they have so much cash there. 5 billion of cash. So they are, they are, they are most likely, they, they definitely they won't go out of business. Ah. Then the thing is, if you want to buy into Grab, you can be patient. Or because once they become profit making, it will start to rally. So if you want to buy, then within the whole of this year, you can slowly buy. But next year, once they turn profitable, it's going to rally already. Uh, I don't think it's going to go, go bankrupt. Uh, but I don't think it's cheap also. And then your upside is kept because of the warrants issued. Yeah. So, but one of your downside risk is political risk. Like, Grab was able to capture all these uh, Asia markets because they has very strong ties to the politicians. They never ban the right healing. They never support the, lo the local taxi drivers. In instead, they open it up for competition. So for Grab, right, they tried to hire uh, the Tan Pei Ling. Lah. So uh, this Tim, Tim Pei Ling is also was, is under the PAP one. Lah. So a lot of the common folks, like Singaporeans, they see the news. Huh? How come a uh, politician go and work for Grab? Now that is a conflict of interest, right? Basically, you are bribing the local government. So that's a lot of pushback. So, so that that is one kind of risk. Ah. So I don't dare to comment much. Ah. I'm not here to be political. So political risk is serious. So Grab cannot afford to offend any of the politicians in all the countries that they operate in. That, that's the thing. So this is a very sensitive thing. And there's the risk, you know, like example, when there's a change of party, let's say, in, I, don't, I don't mention any country. This country always is the same government. And suddenly, your, the next term, the opposition win. Then the opposition say, oh, your, 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 your grab is not creating jobs. You are bullying the low-wage workers. Now, I want you to reduce your commission from 25% to 15%, like what happened in China. I want you to uh, set some limitations to help revive the taxi industry. So that is the political risk for grab. Lastly, uh, we talk about stock price. So it, uh, through the spec IPO, it came in at ten dollars, and in the beginning there was some hype that people push it to eleven dollars, and it has been down trend all the way. So we do, if P T A wise like two fifty three dollars is the bottom uh, three dollars actually is easy buy, as for as say for trading. So three dollars you are you are trying to three x because your upside is kept at anything ten dollar above the employee options, the warrants, all this, they will dilute you. So your upside is kept. But if you can run from $3 to $9, $3.50 to $10, you can 3x your money. But you are betting on that Grab can turn profitable as soon as possible, hopefully the end of this year. So I think the risk reward is, is okay. So I think for me, I have a buy call la, on Grab, but I won't buy it. La. I personally won't buy it. But I think if you want to buy Grab, I think it's okay. But a more wise strategy is to buy all three of them. Buy Grab, buy DT, and buy Uber. So as a basket, uh, you will perform well. Definitely as a basket, long term, they will perform well. Individually, it's more risky. And as a basket, it's more undervalued. You're only paying two times sales. Individually, Grab, I would say, is higher quality, but four times sales is more expensive. So that's all my sharing for today. If you like my sharing, you understand more about Grab, and if you are vested in Grab and you will feel relief that okay, the fundamentals is still pretty solid, just that there's there's some political risk, and that valuations wise is, is still okay. Then if you want to buy Grab, don't go all in on Grab. Grab because it's loss making. Same as C. C is also loss making. I think within the next one or one year later, both C and Grab in two zero two four, they will become profit making. Uh, so once they become profit making, the stock price will rally. But I like C more because C I'm paying three times sales. Grab I have to pay four times sales. So I think C is uh, more undervalued in that sense. Yeah, and also e commerce, I understand it more well. But if Grab comes down to like 250, I will buy. Easy buy. 250, I will go in and buy 
grab ready. So three dollars also can buy. Three dollars I might take a small bite. Yeah, three dollar two fifty easy buy for grab. Master might go in also. So if I go in, I'll update you all. So if you like my sharing, you like my deep dive, feel free to give me a like. Feel free to ask me any questions. So that's all. So one hour pass, <laughs> just another deep dive. So for me, I do a lot of this uh, deep dive series ah. So some of my deep dives, the views are good. Some is no good. Some, some like by two, nobody watch five hundred view only. But it's okay because for me, it's like I I I'm very interested in all these companies, and that's how value investing is. Value investing is you research companies one by one. Once you go through all this, you learn the business, you learn the valuations, you learn the fundamentals. Then you know the company can buy or cannot, whether it has a strong moat or not, whether it's undervalued or not, whether you have margin or safety or not, whether can hot or not. The only way to to know the answer is you have to do this kind of uh, analysis. There's no way out. If you want to be a stock picker, you must spend time to research. But the good thing about being my audience is that, let's say for this grab, right, I I spend three days to research this grab and I consolidate all my findings into this one hour talk. So one, so I save you all a lot of time. So that's the benefit that I help you all. So hopefully, I keep sharing like that. Then more and more people will appreciate, and more people will see the video. So that's my strategy also. So thanks all for the support. Yeah. So feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah. So Edmund Hong asked me, would you buy Grab, ah, Master? So for me, like I say lah, Grab now, three twenty. Uh, I think it's still fairly priced lah. Three dollars, I might I might consider buy lah. Then, two fifty is easy buy. Two fifty, I will buy grab lah. Two two dollar fifty, I want to buy it at about three times sales ah. Four times sales is still fairly priced ah. I'm 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 not getting uh, what minus the cash I'm is now about four times sales ah. I I still want a bit of discount lah. So maybe two two fifty like that. I think I think can buy lah. Two fifty can buy. You look at the yellow is two twenty lah. Yeah, so. Because for me, right, I already have SE as my Asia exposure. Then I have Baba as my China exposure. I have Microsoft and Google as my US exposure. So I I don't mind buying to Grab lah. So if I buy to Grab, then my Asia exposure is C and Grab. Then my China exposure is Baba. Then my US exposure is Microsoft and Google. So my portfolio is very balanced in the sense that I cover the entire group. Because my 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 big picture, my big strategy is still towards tech. Technology is the future. So as the same thing, right? You see, what what is Grab doing? Grab is doing right healing. Also, uh, taxi business is disrupted. Then banks are being disrupted. Because a lot of people, you all say, are using Grab Pay. So banks are being disrupted. Then food delivery, restaurants, yeah, food is being disrupted also. Yeah. So a lot of industries will be disrupted by technology. Shopping malls will be disrupted by Lazada and Shopee. So I rather invest in the technology. I don't want to invest in dinosaur industry. The future is tech ready. That's why my portfolio is pure, purely focused on technology. I all in technology. Then different countries I will research ah. So SE and Grab is more towards like Singapore company. They are actually Singapore, based in Singapore. They are actually Singapore company, but they are not listed in Singapore. Yeah. So, uh, DD was banned for one to two years. So, the DD, uh, they are both their Android and iOS. You cannot download it in China, but now it has resumed already. Starting this year, after the Chinese New Year, people can start to download the DD app already. But their market share got hurt lah. From seventy percent market share, now they drop to like uh fifty percent market share. So DD right, they already delist from the US market. So the one if you buy TT in the US is called pink sheet, is out over the counter, and the liquidity is very thin, so it's pretty risky. If you want to buy TT, best is wait for it to IPO in the Hong Kong market, but they cannot IPO now because they are loss making. One of the rules for Hong Kong is that you have to be profit making, then you can uh, list. But I think there will be an exception because now they are drafting up something already, because now a lot of uh Chinese companies they are loss making. That's why they list in the US. They can, Instead of listing in the Hong Kong, but now they're gonna change the rules to allow them to list in the Hong Kong and China market, despite being loss making. So we have to wait for the update. So don't be surprised if TT they list in Hong Kong year end or next year. So yeah, so China now is some, Gao De Da Che. Wow, I didn't know that Gao De Da Che being dominant. Yeah, so 
may, so so there are a lot of new challenges are uh, coming in into the right healing yeah so it's, it, it will be competitive so uh freddy wong hi master what is the two-day china meeting so the china the liang hui la most i haven't really done much research but i look at the i take a quick note through like bloomberg right the gdp target they set is five percent this is below analyst estimates of 5.3 percent so tomorrow maybe the the china market might be sold down then but it depends on the industry so in the meeting last time pony ma and the baidu the robin lin and the and the bike dance the ceo they will attend the meeting but this time round right all the big tech ceos was not invited to the meeting the ceos that went for the meeting is all in like green energy ev and ai so green energy ev ai on monday they will rally because the, a lot of government policies are going to support this new industry i think ai will be pushed up because ai recently is very trendy la. ai green energy ev will be pushed up on monday. but the big tech like alibaba tencent it might be flat or it might be sold down because the the big tech the ceos are, are, are did not appear in the meeting but uh, the government in their in their speech they say they want to support all these platform companies so they, they are not pushing for economic growth la. they are not cracking down on chinese tech so don't have to worry so i'll read through more then if i'm if i think the i read through everything already then i summarize my thoughts la. if i think it's worth discussing then my next live stream i will, I will talk about the china liang hui the two meet, two session meeting and what's the outlook ahead for china oh but if i think if i read through i think there's nothing special then i don't talk about it then for next week tuesday se will report results then thursday jd will report results so next week i will stream to uh, summarize the latest se, SE results jd i may or may not cover see how it goes but se i will definitely cover shun chai maybe thermasic black swan also so thermasic i think they recently bought into grab eh? you you all must be careful eh? thermasic buys grab share so i think they recently said you see thermasic added stays into grab eh? that's why that's why you see ah uh, you see thermasic buy right then it dropped already so thermasic bought in february right then you go and look at the grab grab chart I think after the market bought right, the grab the price drop eh. So every time the market will buy right, the price drop one eh. uh, so, Yeah, so like, so it was yeah. So I think I think it was in, in my slides. Yeah, so the market bought in February, so they bought about six dollar level. Then it dropped to three dollar. So every time the market buy, then it drops. I don't know why they always buy high, then sell low. So when the market sells grab, then we, we can buy for sure. If, if the next quarterly fouling then thermasic sells grab i will let you all know then i will go in and buy grab oh so john lam thank you thank you for your tips wow i like the thai butt so next time master go the thailand holiday go massage ah, eat food ah, then i also spend the thai butt thanks thanks a lot for the tips and support so marco wong thanks for your support uh mr tokoyomi thanks for the support uh, okay, John John Lam, you can do a quick one on Mara. I don't know what is Mara. Like. I think it's Mara is the data center, is it? Yeah, it's more the Bitcoin or this. Uh. Mara, I don't know. Eh. Mara, yeah, so it's the Bitcoin one. But I, wow, it's, it, one year is down so much. Uh. Yeah, so usually for, for, I don't know if it's the, it's the digital payment for Bitcoin or is the Bitcoin mining. I, I forget already. Oh, Mara digital, yeah, so. I don't really know about this company now but, but i want to comment a bit about the crypto so crypto you see the news are uh, actually the crypto winter is not over yet the stock the crypto price that time it rallied from sixteen thousand to twenty four thousand. now there's a small pullback already so year to date you, you see it has already peaked at 24k now it's going to 22k so i think i think the hype is over already so like like for like a uh, crypto la high growth ah. nowadays less and less people talk about it nowadays all the punters where, where they go the punters they go to ai they want to gamble on the ai stock oh but year to date is up a lot yeah so if you have it i think you should based on like short term thinking ah, got profit i think can take already la. don't be greedy la. i think 
I think it's still uh crypto 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 winter lah. I'm not really familiar with this, this company. Yeah, but but then the, the if you want to gamble right, then now is actually to is trade more. People want to trade more of the AI names so. so AI is the is the one that people want to trade. The crypto uh, NFT all this people forget about it. Yeah, so it's about the crypto mining one. Uh. So it's a uh, yeah crypto mining. So I'm not not familiar. So I I don't I don't. Think that this is this is a good investment then it's also loss making so just avoid lah. then if you got profit just take lah. with be it any crypto first you need the earnings minus two dollars that's a lot eh. the stock price is six dollars eh. it minus the the earning, they're losing 260 per year two years go bankrupt already so this kind of companies it can go bankrupt one so be careful eh. mr tokoyomi yes yeah, so as an investor, right, if you want to, if you don't want to learn all this, then you just buy the ETF, uh, DCA, SPY, QQQ, D DCF, the Hang Seng Tech Index. But if you want to pick individual stocks, you must do your research. So, example, if you are invested in Grab, if you buy buy Grab at ten dollar, then 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 you must ask yourself why you buy at ten dollar. At ten dollar, you were paying like twenty times sales or what? Like, the kind of insane valuations that. Like. 15 times 10 so you must look at the valuations if if you know that you are buying at 15 times sales it, it, it must be a short-term trade up 10 20 percent you faster sell already you buy at 15 times sales the longer you hold the more danger because you know eventually the market will pri reprice it and now it's pricing it fairly after the crash it's now pricing it at four times sales so now it becomes fairly priced and as the revenues go 50 percent every year the price to sales will become smaller and smaller so if one year later, Grab still trades at uh, $3, then the forward price to sales will be two times or even three times, then it becomes an attractive buy. Oh, so BlockX, thanks for your tips. Wow, tomorrow master can eat seafood soup already. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so John Lam, I make money on 2021. Stop a bit speculation, but waiting for Bitcoin to run. Yeah, so Bitcoin now a bit out of steam lah, from 24k come down to 22. So I don't know lah, because I still feel that US is more towards a, a mild recession this year. So I'm bearish on the US market. So the US market now, you see the Russia and Ukraine war is actually intensifying. Yet the fundamentals is bad. Yet the, the Nasdaq is rallying for no reason. So the People will say that the market is forward looking, six to nine months forward looking. So investors are saying that six to nine months later, the recession is over or there is no recession. So let's say nine months later, they are saying by year end, the market, the economy will be back to normal. So this year, we have a mild recession for three to six months, then year end is back to normal. I disagree. Uh. I think the recession the 5% inflation, 5% interest rate is here to stay for the entire year. Next year, you, the inflation and interest rate will still be high. Then it will come down slowly. So the mild recession, it will be a bit sticky. It can last for one to two years. So I'm less optimistic than the most people are thinking. So I think it's wise to be defensive. Defensive in a sense, not say whole cash, no whole goal. If you like cash, it's, it's okay. I like to hold big tech companies that are cash rich. That's why through the fundamental analysis, if you know that the company is holding a lot of cash, it's actually good for the company. Like we know that uh, the Grab has 5 billion of cash. So the cash, it won't go bankrupt and the cash can earn the 4-5% interest rate. So if the company has a lot of cash, you can sleep well at night. But if the company is, is in debt, oh, then you have to be careful. The company, if you have a lot of debt, and you cannot repay the debt, it might go into liquidation. So Martin Ern, oh thanks for the support. Uh Mock Agnes, Joe political risk on China happening. So that there, there is a fear that, that there will be more sanctions on on China. And also there is a fear that TikTok might be banned. So if tech, TikTok be banned, right, it's bad for TikTok shareholder. But it's good for Meta and Google. So if TikTok gets banned right then the meta and google will rally in fact the last friday uh, meta rally six percent because of the news so the ceo of the bike dance will be coming to us to testify 
So after he testify, then they will decide whether they want to ban the TikTok or not. So if TikTok confirm ban, right, then Meta will rally. But now it's a bit too late to buy Meta already. Lah. But I think you can buy Google. If uh, TikTok is banned, Google should benefit because YouTube, there is the YouTube Shorts. Ma. So if TikTok is banned, all the users will hop over to YouTube Shorts, to Instagram Reels. So be positioned in Meta and Google for the TikTok ban. And don't, don't buy TikTok, but you cannot buy TikTok. Lah. Only private investor can. But if TikTok is banned, it can be negative sentiments for the Chinese tech. It means that US and China continues to decouple. But fundamentally, it doesn't affect Alibaba. But sentiments-wise, investors continue to be negative. Yeah, so Martin, I hold 9,000 shares of Alibaba in the Hong Kong market. So that's my all-in Alibaba portfolio. Then for my Weibo account, it's actually a small account, lah, just like I think uh, 6,000 US dollars. So that account is more diversified. The It's called the YouTube account. So for my YouTube account, I have Baba, uh, Meta, Google, and SE. This These four counters. But each position is just one or 2,000 US dollars only. So because I don't want every, because whatever I buy, people will follow me and buy. So people bird will copy my entire portfolio. So if my portfolio is 100% Alibaba, then people also follow me. Then what if Alibaba really GG came over? So I try to be more responsible. Lah. So my all in Alibaba 9,000 shares in the Hong Kong market, I just put aside. That is for my own long-term holding. Whereas for my like sharing, my teaching online, I still try to teach a more diversified portfolio. So Alibaba for China, then my uh, Meta and Google for US market, then SE for Asia market. So you don't have to follow me. If you are bearish on China, you believe China is very dangerous, then you don't buy Baba. Go and buy Meta and Google. They are still great company, super cash count, a lot of cash in their balance sheet. You then SE is and Grab, this kind of companies is actually more high risk uh, because they don't they, they don't have a track record of profit. And probably only the end of this year, then SE and Grab they can turn profitable. Yeah, so John Lam totally agree that technology is so important. So yeah, cannot imagine there's no internet. Yeah, so wow, Mara, Mara speculative. Uh, so hope that you make money, huh? That's you. Just short term trading. Uh. Yeah, so Master also buy into the Microsoft. Uh. No, no, I never buy Microsoft. Uh. I only buy the Meta. But Microsoft, I, I like Microsoft. I like the fundamentals because it's still dominative but like my, my, my laptop inside is still the windows am i right yeah so microsoft is not cheap like pe 27 but microsoft like pe 25 p 20 then i'll consider to buy microsoft is a great company that i want to own but i, I will not buy it because the valuations is not cheap whereas uh, google and meta is cheaper they are, they are both they are also super cash count, but the Google is still trading. I think 19 times earnings, yeah, 18 times earnings. Eh. It's still cheap. Yeah. Then Meta is 20 times earnings. Meta 20 times earnings, you want to DCA, is still okay. But I think fairly priced already. I, do, I don't think Meta is cheap, lah, but if long term DCA, is still okay lah, at 20 times earnings. Yeah. So jo John, John Lam, Fu Tu, Fu, Fu Tu, right? It's like uh, they are still loss making if I'm not wrong. So for for two right, it's like the use the Mumu app la. A lot of people use the Mumu app. It's under for two. Hey, profit making ready ah. Oh, last time I I, I look at it, it's a uh, loss making. Eh. I'm surprised that they turn profit. So, uh, for two and Tiger, these two they are actually Chinese companies. So, Tiger is the one that always they have the advertisement ah. Tiger then for two is under Mumu. So these two are very well promoted. And there's Weibo. Weibo, I don't know if they are listed or not. Yeah, so they are, so Futu and Tiger in the future, if you all have strong interest, I might do a deep dive uh, on, on these companies in the future to understand on the stock brokerage, stock trading industry, how they make money. So Futu, a lot of them, right, they make money actually through lending money and through the stock options. Stock options uh, is their cash count actually. You buy sell shares, they don't make much. They make, make a lot through the stock options for the Futu and Tiger. Also, actually, this year, 
they're up a lot eh, actually they're, they're running pretty strong eh. whereas alibaba is flat jd is down 20 percent so surprisingly they are doing very well maybe because they are profitable already but i i never really see any news last year there was news that they they, they got cracked down that they should not accept customers uh allow the main lenders to buy into the u.s market yeah so Futu, I think PE19 looks looks okay. It's a high growth. Uh. I think it, it uh, but the this year the earnings could be bad because people will trade stocks less because people are risk adverse. They worry about the recession. So for the US market, people park their money into uh, the fixed deposits. But Futu, they also uh, cover the China and Hong Kong market. So if this year the China and Hong Kong market go into, into a bull run, then the full two the earnings could benefit so it's hard hard to say yeah and that's what so uh what inverse the market so the market if they sell grab then we buy grab yeah mr toko uh tokoyomi yes free cash flow free cash is king yeah because cash now you can earn four or five percent interest rate or you can use the cash to bargain hunt if the market crash yeah baba i'm all in like you i think it's the last time to see hundred dollar next run is 150 so alibaba seems to have found a support level already it's is at this level you see now it seems to be holding up at this 90 dollar level it then hong kong is like 88 dollar level it seems that there's a a lot of people doing bargain hunting because it's too freaking cheap already so i think it's now is the good spot to buy alibaba Although I'm very heavily vested, lah, my views are biased, but Alibaba, easy buy. Then almost one quarter of their market cap is in cash. They have 55 billion in cash. 20-25% of their market cap is cash. So cash is king. And they're also doing a lot of the share buyback. Also, yeah, so full two profit for some time. So that's good. That's good. Whereas you see uh, Grab and SE, they are loss making. Whereas full two their profit making so i'll take a look at futu and tiger so maybe in the future i'll do a deep dive on futu and tiger so that's all my sharing for today so in any of my videos feel free to leave any comments uh, feedback to me what companies you want me to cover or like or, or what the like, news event you want me to cover so yeah so next week we see how we look at the se and the jd results yeah, so inverse, so Temasek is like the Jim Cramer, inverse index. When Temasek buy, uh, means going to drop. When Temasek sell, uh, means going to go up already. So that's all for my sharing today. Hope you all enjoy. Feel free to give me a like. So take care all. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.